I'm Redkin Master Artist Ruth Roach and I want to share with you how to do this look. So we've sectioned her hair into the sides and the back, right up from the back of the ear up and over to the other side behind the ear. And then what I've done here in the back is we've put two diagonal sections in and that gives us an even amount of density here in the back if we're going to start by putting a strong line in. When you're working with really fine hair, even if you want it to have like a choppy texture, it's always best to put a blunt line in there first and then add your texture if you're going to. Sometimes you don't even need it because the hair is so fine that it separates itself a little bit on the ends. So I cut against the skin so that we keep a nice blunt line and we really control the hair. And I've also got her head down so that when that head comes up, it's as blunt looking as possible. I'm just going to continue working up the top, paying attention to the growth patterns in the crown. So I'm really paying attention to the natural fall up here in the crown because that hair is going to fall wherever it wants to fall, so I need to cut it where it's going to live. So her hair is fine, so I've taken the whole side down as one section. However, if she had thicker hair, I'd be taking smaller sections as I work my way up so that we don't have too much density all at once at the bottom. So what I'm paying attention to now is not only natural fall, but the amount of tension I have in the hair. So I'm using the wide teeth of the comb so I have less tension. And as I come over the ear, which is a, a danger zone because we can get a nick or a hole in our line down here. We can just lay the hair over the ear with our wide teeth and cut it where it lives. We can also go in and just tap the shears right above the ear and that gives it a little bit more room to travel over that ear. So I've dropped down the fringe area. You can see how I've left that out. And what we're gonna do is work with natural fall again so that I can cut a little bit shorter bits in the center and then work out to the longer length that she has here. And I'm gonna cut it where it lives. So I'm just gonna work with this center piece here and I'm gonna twist it. And then I'm just going to talk with the shears from her mouth down to her chin. Now what I'm going to do is just connect the edge of that to our perimeter. Super simple, just a nice way to connect a fine fringe that's on the longer side. So I'm using Guts 10 just at the root area, targeting it right where we need it for some lift, some hold, and to get that hair off of her head. So I'm just going to rough dry with my hands to get the moisture out and then put a little bit of a smoothness to the surface and the ends with the round brush. Now I'm going to go in and just clean up the edges here. So I'm just going to have you tuck your head down a little bit. I'm going to comb that flat and just clean up right around that edge there. Now what I'm doing here is I'm 
rather than coming in this way with the shears, I'm coming in this way so I can get underneath that last section and clean it away because that's usually all it is, is that very last section. So when we cut hair all one length, when you comb it up, you're gonna get a little bit of a, of a point in the center. So all I'm gonna do is just point cut that very, very center piece off so that as she flips her hair from side to side or her part isn't exactly in the middle every day, it's going to fall nicely and we're not gonna end up seeing any, any long pieces hanging over anywhere. So what we're going to do is look at our two sides and just lighten up the areas that need it and open this up just a little bit more. And this is something I like to do once the hair is dry so we can really see what it's going to do. So now I'm going to use a little bit of Iron Shape 11 which has got a heat protector in it. It's going to give us some control of the hair and a little bit more hold when I go in with the iron. So we're just going to spray the whole area first and then go in with the iron. So I'm gonna go in with the iron as if it's a wand because that's what Sophia has is a wand at home. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of a bend in the hair this way. And we want this to be a lazy kind of wave, so not too perfect. So the next one, I'm gonna do it the opposite way. And I'm just holding onto those ends. Next one, I'm gonna go back the way we started. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on that top section. Lightly spray, run it through with my fingers, and then I'm gonna go in with the iron the same way. Always make sure that the hair around the face, you're winding it away from her face and then when you go into the rest of it, you can alternate. Now I'm going in with Triple Dry 15, which is gonna give it some texture and a little bit of hold so it's last a little bit longer, but you just get that real lived in look with the Triple Dry 15. So here's Sophia finished. You can see that we get a lot of volume in there by cutting it blunt using the Guts 10 and then putting a little bit of wave in it with the iron gives it a little more of a lived in look.